Hey everybody, this is Tracy from Science Buddies, and today I'll be teaching you how to use reinforcement learning to solve a maze. This is the difference between an agent who has been trained through reinforcement learning to navigate through a maze and one who hasn't been trained. As we can see, the trained agent has already made its way to the goal, while the untrained agent is still stumbling through the maze, making lots of missteps and running into walls. Before training, the agent is completely blind to all of the states except for the one it is in currently. It does not know anything about the maze, so it rolls a die that decides whether it will go up, down, left, or right. If it hits a wall, it will receive a penalty and make a note to itself that it is likely not wise to go there again. It will also receive a small penalty for every step it takes, even when it doesn't hit a wall, because otherwise the agent might just go back and forth between the same two steps, not incentivizing it to reach the end. The agent will receive a reward only when it reaches the goal. The agent's goal is to maximize its rewards, and this process is called reinforcement learning. Today, I'll be showing you how to create an agent that can solve a maze. The link to this project will be down in the description. It will contain the project information as well as how you can download the starter code you see right here. First off, I'll be showing you how to use Google Colab, which is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button right here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control enter on your keyboard or command enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here or by this green check mark right here. You can add a cell by clicking on this button on the upper left over here and delete it by clicking on this trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl and Z on your keyboard. Now I'll show you how to create the maze environment. To do that, you have to run this maze class here. Then you can create a maze with any layout you'd like. As you can see here, 1 represents a wall and 0 represents an empty space, so you can edit the maze as so. And this is what the maze looks like right now. And if I wanted to change this area into a wall, I can edit the maze right here. And voila, the maze has been updated. You can also change where the start and the goal is. This follows a coordinate system, so 0, 0 is in the top left corner, and 4, 4 is in the bottom right corner. You can put the start and goal in any empty space. For example, I can move my start position over here by editing the code as so. Implementing the agent is easy, as we have provided most of the code. All you need to do for this section is run the cell. You don't have to worry about the details for most of this code. The main things to focus on will be this getAction function, which decides whether an agent will take a random move or take a move based on values in its queue table. And this is the function that updates the queue table after every move. The reward system is used to guide the agent's behavior. To encourage the agent to reach the goal efficiently, a significant positive reward, which we set to 100, is assigned when it successfully reaches the goal. To discourage the agent from hitting walls, a substantial negative reward, currently set to negative 10, is given for wall collisions. Finally, a small negative reward, currently set to negative 1, penalizes unnecessary steps, preventing an agent from walking back and forth aimlessly. This reward helps the agent learn an optimal policy that prioritizes reaching the goal while avoiding collisions and minimizing wasteful movements. Make sure to run this cell before moving on to the next step. We'll now test the agent before it has been trained at all. You also don't need to know the details of these functions, but understand that in these functions, the agent is essentially taking random actions since it hasn't been trained at all yet. Make sure to run these cells. As we can see, the agent has taken this many steps, which is an insane amount because you and I can see that we only need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 steps to reach the end. And this reward is also negative, even when we are trying to optimize for the greatest reward possible. We can see the steps that it has taken here, and we can see that it is going back and forth and running into walls, just like the animation we saw of the untrained agent in the beginning of the video. It is now time to set up our training function. This is very similar to our test agent function, except now the agent will solve the maze for a specified number of times, called episodes, which we have currently defaulted to 100. Every time the agent solves the maze, it will update its queue table, 
which is essentially the agent keeping track of which moves were the best to take in order to maximize its rewards. Make sure to run this cell before moving on to the next section. It is finally time to train the agent. To do so, you just call the function train agent. We can see from this graph how quickly the agent is learning. As we can see from the rewards graph, the agent started out with a very low reward the first time it stepped through the maze, and it was able to increase its payoff over time dramatically. Similarly, we can see that the agent started off taking a lot of steps in the beginning, then learned to take less steps to reach the goal the more times it stepped through the maze. We can now test the agent with the test function to see if our training was effective. This is the new path that our agent has taken, as well as the new number of steps and the total reward. Did the training work? We can now experiment with different reward systems to see how that affects how the agent learns. We can compare them by copying this cell and changing the values of the rewards and penalties. To copy the entire cell, you can click on the cell, then press Ctrl A and then Ctrl C on your keyboard. Add a new cell and then press Ctrl V on your keyboard. From here on, you can change the rewards as so and run them to compare them to each other. In reinforcement learning, the choice of reward and penalty values significantly impacts an agent's behavior. High rewards can lead to overfitting, while low rewards lead to slower learning. Excessive penalties make agents overly cautious, while low penalties may result in permissive behavior. Striking the right balance is crucial for effective tr agent training. We can read more about high and low rewards on the project page. As a final step, which is completely optional, you can try experimenting by creating your own mazes for the agent to learn. You can create the format of the maze here. Then you have to specify the start and goal coordinates for your maze here. From here on, the possibilities are endless. Get creative with your mazes. You can then train your agent on the maze by learning these cells here. And with that, we reached the end of this tutorial for the maze reinforcement learning project. Happy coding! Remember that you can find written instructions and example code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.